السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We meet again today, and today we will talk about the third episode or the third part of towards effective civil society organization. We talked about the definition of civil society organization or the civil society, and then we talked about the importance of civil society organization, civil society, and today we talk about the role of youth in civil society and civil society organization. And uh, I have to thank my colleague uh, Ahmed Sheikh from Idlib, Maher from Istanbul, and Sahar from Birmingham. And if you would like to join any one of my social media, you can do so, please. And uh, please, let us focus today about the role of the young people like yourself any part of the world in building civil society organization, civil society sector. Who are the youth? This is something which is very crucial for us to understand. Who are the youth? They are every citizen that can have spirit, an urge, a message, vitality, and the effectiveness enabling him or her to achieve the fulfillment of their potential and the success of their mission. Even if they are old at the age of 60, 70, 80, or 90. Have spirit, urge, message, vitality, effectiveness, what? Enabling them to achieve the, and the fulfillment of their potential and the success of their mission, even if they are very old in their age. This is number one definition, my own definition. They are an, not an age group connected to a geographical location or era of time, or culture, or race, or faith, or history. Mm -hmm. They are neither age group, actually, nor race, nor era of time, nothing of this at all. My definitions as well, they might be amongst whom the disabled people, the special people with special needs, or from amongst the non-professional and non-educated. Any one of these categories and more could be amongst the young people that would like to invest in them and see what is the role in building a stronger civil society sector and civil society organization. Also, they could be from amongst the needy poor or the wealthy rich. It doesn't make any difference if you are poor or rich. You are a young man, a young woman, have a role in society. You play it regardless. Okay, they could be also uh, in every generation. They are not they could be. They are in every generation, every society, every nation, every continent, and every era of time. They are there all the time. They are there all the time till God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will end the life of people on earth and will start to have a different life in the year to come. So they are at eight, at in, in every generation, society, nation, continent, and era of time. Who are they again? Another definition. They are the power and chivalry, the vision and message, determination and persistence. These are the philosophy of the action, the dynamic action of the youth are taking through their actually power. So they are again the power, chivalry, the vision and message determination and persistence. They are, this is some of the definition of the youth. More definitions I put for you people, they are the journey and leadership, the reality and offering, the mean and pioneering, the way and joyfulness. I say this again because this touches your heart. They are the journey and leadership, the reality and offering, the mean and pioneering the way and joyfulness. This is the young people, men and women. They are the present time and future. Their construction, construction and reconstruction, the renaissance and civilization, the pride and honor. Say it again because there's a mistake here. I think spelling mistakes, instead of constitution should be construction. They are the present and future the construction and the reconstruction, the renaissance and civilization, the pride and honor. And they are 
last but not least, I'm not sure if the last or some more to come, they are the sacrifices and the giving, the offering and the existence, the inner self and purity, the satisfaction and contentment. Say the last one again because the last, these three of them will be very sentimental to the hearts of the young people. They are the sacrifices and the giving, the offering and the existence, the inner self and purity, the satisfaction and contentment. Oh, there's more to come. They are the generation to come. They are the hope and action, the glory, dignity, and the eminence. Say them again. They are the generation to come, hope and actions, glory, dignity, and the eminence. They are the future treasures, hidden in the distant depth of the present era of time. These are the definitions of the youth or the young people. I would love to believe that leadership, political leadership, will believe in some of what I said about the young people. Because if they don't believe in that, they waste the huge resources and the most rewarding resource of investment in their country. If we do not realize over the last how many, maybe 15 or 16 definitions that I put there, actually those leadership should be blind, folded. And they are more than that. Are you people one of them or not? This is my definition. Many, many people have got many different definitions of the youth or the young people. No problem. Okay? But I would like to encourage you as young men and women to be able to make your own definition and to be confident to defend the definition you are making. What is the role? Yes, you can, uh, you said, people will say, okay, you said all this to us. What's next? What can we do as young men and young women? You have to have a role. And there's a big statement I'm going to mention now to say that actually this is a blanket statement. What does it say? They should be having a crucial role in every aspect of life in our society. This is a blanket statement. Blanket statement and cross-cutting everything. I will say it again. They should have should be having a crucial role in every aspect of life in our society. Then let us go on to different roles. Who are they? They are today's students. They are today's disciplines of the scholars. And they are tomorrow's scientists. This is the role. They become the protectors. They protect our societies in different means and ways. Okay? They are effective achievement social dynamic that can meet and supersede all challenges. They become, they become what? The youth themselves become the effective achieving social dynamic that can meet and supersede all the challenges. And you can see that all the big challenges globally or nationally or, or regionally is being achieved by the young people in different arenas to become the sponsoring fathers in the future of their life, they become the sponsoring father and caring mothers. Okay, Sponsoring father and caring mother. I believe strongly in family making because this is the most important uh, civil society organization and the cornerstone of building any civil society or any nation or any country or any state or any uh, civilization that we have. They become the skilled, skillful, and professional expertise in professions needed by such. They themselves are the people who will have all the skills for you to enable your society to proceed forward through their professional skills and expertise. They, they are the pioneering initiative makers. They are initiative makers. Not only initiative makers, but pioneering initiative makers. Use them, empower them, invest in them. They become the future of our society and nation. They are the future. Because I'm at the age of 70 or 80 or 60 or whatever it is. I have to re give the relay, uh, the, the, what they call the relay stick in the relaying team. To who? Not to another 70 years old or 80 years old, but to a young man and woman. So I have to be putting them with me on the stage on the table to nurture them, to carry on to become the future of our society. 
to become the effective and real partners in life. When we are running our society and our community, they are the real, eff effective and real partners when building our communities and countries. We cannot exclude them from any steps of building our communities and societies. Become a real partner. Listen to their opinion, have a voice, and have an initiative that we might follow. We become the real and effective advocate. Advocate because they have the energy, they have the time, they have the power, they have the urge. They become the real uh, and effective advocates who can direct our countries, not only give the voices, but give the direction to our countries. They are the revolutionary who can start the process of the positive social change. Most of the revolution happening on Earth, or happened on Earth, is actually run, or actually majority of the people started it are young people. Well, young people. What is the role of the state towards the youth? First of all, number one, state has to believe, and the government has to believe, and the official has to believe, and king, and queen, and president, and sheikh, and the emir, and the prince, and everybody has to believe in this category of people. Okay? This is before we start anything. The state has to realize that the highest return from investment in social life is in human resources, particularly in youth development. This is another blanket statement. Two blanket statements. I mentioned this is the second one. How by providing different social services to protect the youth development. What is this social services? Education, health, awareness raising, cultural activities, sports activities, rehabilitation programs, training and trust building programs, capacity building, as well as other, other, other social services. It's so number one. Number two, protecting the society from what? From different social diseases, such as drug dealing, addiction, prostitution, smuggling, organized crime, radicalism, extremism, terrorism, and all these social problems which is affecting our children and our young people and our societies. Number three, which is very important, civil liberty space. Never to shrink it, keep expanding it, widening, promoting it, and allowing more people to come inside the civil liberty space. Number four, as a, as a role of government, promoting and encouraging volunteering and volunteerism. Becomes now another blanket statement. Volunteerism and volunteering. And making volunteerism is a part of the national curriculum of schools, universities, even government offices and companies, where it will become one of the KPI, key performance indicator, when it found it's a part of your key performance indicator, you could be promoted to a higher position in the company or in the government. Also, government has to support the youth organization. You don't, the youth, young people cannot just make their organization and don't have any moral support, social support, political support, financial support, and extra technical support from the government offices. Also, the government actually, and the state, supporting and promoting innovation. Because those young people have got crazy ideas some days. Crazy, crazy, unbelievable ideas. I was uh, listening to somebody who was talking about the people who started the Facebook, was two university students, I can't remember what the name of the university is. It was just a crazy idea, just to put the images on and make it a Facebook, and now more than one billion people actually are using the Facebook, and I don't know how much money they are making out of this, but they were young people in the university at that time. Supporting and promoting innovative, pioneering, and exploring and innovating and pioneer, innovative, pioneering, exploring, and creative programs. You have to understand the mentality and the mindset of the young people because they're always thinking outside the box. And you think that they are crazy and they have no vision? No, they have, but you are, have yourself as a responsible government officer or senior citizen in the government or in the community, you have to be able to capacitate, to, to, to increase the capacity of your ability to think about how they think, 
in their boxes. Encouraging scouting, organizations, camping, exploration activities and programs, other programs. Participating, well, this is very important, and this is where you can build real leaders. Participating in responsibility sharing. Responsibility sharing starts from the young age. You find that actually the businessman in his company bring his daughter and the son with him. Come my son, go to the warehouse. Come my daughter, go to the office. Come my son. After you finish your work in the warehouse, in the, in the warehouse, you come with me to the office. See the accounts, see the finance, to see the management, to see the, 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 the promotion, to see the, uh, what you call it, uh, quality control and all this sort of thing. So the, the, the father himself is empowering his children to become the future leader of his company. Here, the government has to do the same, participating in the responsibility sharing through their involvement in what? In planning, implementing social program on this activity. You don't just tell them, hey guys, this program is for you. It doesn't suit us. Because you don't know how we think, the way we think, what we need, and this is not our program. So they have to be involved in the process of planning, thinking, and implementing as well. The planning outing, as I mentioned this before, outing, scouting, and cultural programs, because the cultural program is very important to explore the, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the innovative, pioneering individual who could be uh, poets, who could be artists, who could become musician, who could become painters, who could become build, uh, making sculptures and statues and all these sort of things. And this comes that you have as a government and as a state to encourage this, to enable, to, show, to see the diversity of the, the, of the thinking and culture of the people that you are having. Protecting deep-rooted social community values. The government has to protect the, what is the social, the deep-rooted social values. You have to protect it to get this young man and young woman growing like a very strong tree. Nobody can shake it. Not like a bamboo shoot or a sugar cane shoot, which does not have a strong root and anybody can pull it out. Pull it out. Government and the state has to, to protect different faith, values, religious groups as well. Promoting and changing youth initiatives into community organizations to encourage young people. They have a small initiative which is not registered in the government uh, 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 offices. You can have a special department the Ministry of Social Welfare about initiatives. Okay. Then once the initiative become mature, you can encourage young people to change it from an, from an initiative to a community organization to national organization, to international organization as well, through the laws of the uh, government. Encouraging promoting marriages. I mentioned the, uh, the family role before, because if the, 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 the society or the country the, who does not believe in family, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, and children, and auntie and aunties, this is my belief, whether you say that you have different kind of families, it's entirely up to you. This is my belief. Because this family is the cornerstone of building any society and any nation and any civilization and the Renaissance. Changing and respecting different education. Oh, this is very important. Educational program is not one size fits all. It's not my way or highway. It's not just a government way that have been used to teach the young children and then people many subjects that they don't like. And we only say that the people who come out of the university are the people who can actually have the jobs. Strong mm -hmm. philosophy of thinking, wrong vision, and wrong way of controlling, the, 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 of, of actually directing the, the, the rapid control or the progressive control of the society. Too many kinds of education, all of them has to be treated the same. One of them is the government education that we mentioned actually, which can stuff your children with many subjects that they don't like and they hate and they give bad marks on it. The other one is vocational training. The people who come from the vocational training and vocational education will be able to be as good as the people who come from the university because through vocational training they become professional in the 
in the subject that they are having. Okay, social education. When you have none, uh, uh, none. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we don't want to put the, the young people in a box room and keep stuffing them. Let them go outside in the open field and learn. Learn what the society needs outside the school rooms, which actually control their ability of thinking. Investment education, what does it mean in skills? If I find that a young man or a young woman is very, very skillful in arts, she can, after the primary school, go to learn arts to the depth. In drama, in poetry, in uh, recitation of Quran, in maybe sports, activity, in music, in singing, in all this of them. Why should I give them subjects after they have the primary education at the age of 12? So I have to start preparing them to become the superstar from the age of 13, 14 and so on. And they might have the special education to bring them not only superstar on the national level, but global star on the global level. Also the innovative, the innovative individual, somebody does not like to read, but he's like to go out with his hands to do something, to do a tool, to do an instrument, whether she or he. Let them do this. Investment education skills, pioneering and innovative uh, individuals. Uh, religious and cultural education has to be there as well. If I would like to become a sheikh, I would like to become a priest, I would like to become a monk, it has to be going from the bottom up and to be respected by the government and by the community. Building sport, more sports centers and cultural centers and arts centers. This must be done. We spend most of the money of the government on what? on arms, on uh, security, and on military. Okay, next. Creating more job opportunities. This is on the side of the government. And also creating community markets where the young people and low income will be able to come and earn their living while actually dealing from a very small budget in this community market. Organizing more awards. If you want to encourage the youth, should be award for science, award technology, award for uh, literacy, award for uh, innovation, award for sports, award for uh, uh, all these kind of things in the society to encourage young people to be a part of it so they can compete with one another. We only have the awards in the in, in this world, world, world called uh, uh, X Factor, fine. That's not, not bad. It's one of the awards, but it's not the only award. Uh, Britain got talent, okay fine, Arab got talent, okay fine, but actually apart from this, we need somebody to come and talk and make about award on history, award in culture, award on actually science and technology, award in, in, in literacy, award in actually uh, poetry, and all this kind of other awards which to complement one award. Those who don't uh, these are the warnings. So I mentioned the role of government now, the role of the state before that. These are the warning for the government and for the senior people in the city who, if they do have that, they will have something different. And this is a very harsh statement to each and every one of those people who do not have this. First warning, those who don't or cannot understand the role of young people in society will not understand how to build the pillars of the living life of the society. They'll be blind. Say it again. Those who don't or cannot understand the role of the people in society will not understand how to build the pillars of the living life of the society. Second warning, those who have or so or see no values in young people will be for myself valueless. Those who don't invest in youth, they lose their investment. They lose, they are losers. Fourth warning, those who fail and waste the life of the younger generations are criminals. This heavy one, but take it on my responsibility. Those people, or those responsible people, those government officers, or those president and whatever you call them, 
who fail and waste the younger generation, okay, are criminals. Those who do not utilize the energy of the young people are sinners because they have energy. In front of you, Mr. Mr. Minister, Mr. President, Mr. King, or Miss Queen, or whatever you call it, there is an energy on the table, utilize it. If you don't, you are sinners. Those who make young people a commodity, oh, come, come, come with me, I'm having a conference, and I have some girls here and some boys here, yes, what I'm calling them. Okay, fine, you fool me, use me as a commodity, use me as an image. Okay, those who make young people as a commodity for sale are destroying the future of their nations. Because those, those young people will be, will be disgraced and will be cursing such a leader. This is the final statement which comes to conclude the warning that we have. Young people are the living life of our future, the history of our past and the cornerstone of our presence. I'll say it again for you because I, love, I know that you love this kind of sentence. Young people are talking about you, you young people, are the living life of our future. This is number one. The history of our past, which you made our history and the cornerstone of our present time. Those who undermine the value of young people are changing their societies into what? Sick, fragile, failing, divided, and fragmented societies. Let me say it again. Those who undermine the value of young people are changing the society into a sick, fragile, failing, divided, and fragmented societies. Why? That's because of the multiple complex, complicated social diseases will be coming up when you do that. Because by doing that, you will encourage a multiple complex, complicated social diseases. This social disease will be doing what? Cutting, loosening, and untying all the bonds of social infrastructure of societies. So when you ignore the young, sorry, okay, this will, uh, I say that those who undermine the value of young people are changing the society to sick, fragile, failing, divided, and fragmented societies. Why? Because they are going to create or the multiple complex, complicated, Social diseases, doing what the social diseases? Cutting, loosening, and untying all bonds of social infrastructure in the society. This is my view and my vision for the definition of the youth, the role of the state, as well as the warning that I'm saying. I hope that you will be able to invest more in the youth sector or the young people sector, and I hope that the young people will be able to stand up and ask for the right and not let anybody to let them down and actually to demotivate them or to demean them. I will do it in Arabic, inshallah, in the coming talk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.